Did you know that you may not need to use fertilizers at all? Whether it's organic or synthetics, vegetables, grass or flowers, perennials, you name it, and could be causing more harm than good. So today's video, we're gonna look at whether or not you should be using fertilizer in your garden without getting a soil test. So we've done several videos on the difference between synthetics and organic fertilizers. So I'm not gonna go over that here too much today. What we are gonna discuss is just fertilizers in general, regardless of the ones that you choose. Now, nutrients can be broken up into three main categories, macronutrients, secondary macronutrients, and micronutrients. Micronutrients, throw that baby out with the bath water because it actually doesn't matter that much. And it's very rare that you would have any sort of a micronutrient deficiency because micro is not referencing the size so much as it is referencing how much that plant needs. And if you apply it, I can almost guarantee you you're gonna have issues. Let's avoid putting any micronutrients on. However, what we can discuss is macro and secondary macro. So macros include nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. There's a fourth number, it's sulfur, because sulfur is incredibly important for things like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, canola, mustard, garlic. Literally the list goes on and on. Anything that's stanky, that's that's where sulfur applies. We also have calcium and magnesium on that list, and we know that this is contributor to things like blossom and rot when it's not bioavailable, not so much when it's missing, because it's very unlikely it will be missing, particularly if you're gardening in the prairies. So I currently have a tomato patch where I'm growing a control with no fertilizer, an organic and then a synthetic. And I actually have planted those tomatoes at varying different heights. And there are some differences. I'm not gonna talk about them here in today's video. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. But there are some differences between them. However, it is incredibly minute. Now, the reason why it's minute is because my beds in general are not intensive, meaning it's just a classic garden setup where I get one harvest off a year. So I'm not doing cycle after cycle. I'm not in Texas or California where I can get two sets of crops off. I can get one and only one because, oh, Canada. So if you have something like a perennial bed where you have mulch on the surface, you have a constant influx of dead plant debris, you're probably just fine without adding any fertilizer at all because the microbes, the soil microbes are probably doing a lot of the work. And in fact, I don't ever fertilize my perennial beds, whether it's my shitty one in the backyard or the one in the front that is absolutely pulverized by heat and sun. I don't actually fertilize either one of those and they perform just fine. And that rule also applies to grasses. So the reasons why grass lawns don't actually need a lot of fertilizer, particularly if you remove the bag off of the lawnmower itself, is because it's been shown that lawns are able to support themselves just through the cycling of the grass clippings, AKA the plant debris. So if you are cycling a lot of plant debris, if you're leaving plants in situ, if you're cutting plants off at the base rather than yanking them out, these are all indications that you probably don't need to add any fertilizer at all, whether it's organic or synthetic. Now, what I can say is that you need to obviously leave the bulk of that plant in situ. Say you remove parts of the plant because you don't want a snow capture or it's just neat and tidier to actually physically remove the plants. Well, if that is the case, then what you may choose to do is supplement. So supplementation can come in a bunch of different like, shapes and sizes, whether it's synthetic or organic. Now organic is easier only because you can visually see what you're doing, whereas synthetics, it's more math, more chemistry, more calculation, which is totally fine if you go that route. It's just obviously you gotta think and be a little bit more aware of what you're doing. Compost, however, or manures are pretty darn easy to figure out exactly how much to add, pending how much you took off. So what I want you to think about, whether it's a annual flower garden, a vegetable garden, a lawn where you leave the bag on, or a perennial garden where you remove a bulk of the plant debris, you need to think, if I was to take that plant, chop it off at the surface, compost it, how much compost would I get from that? What would happen to that plant debris if I cut it down and then dehydrated it and grinded it up? 
well, that's what you need to replace because it's just a system and you can make it a closed system rather than an open one by literally just replacing what you took away. That will take time. Organic fertilizers need to be decomposed and mineralized and worked on. And that means if you're just beginning to garden and you're not at the point yet where things are cycling and it is a closed system, you may choose to add fertilizer to that system. Now, one of the great ways to do this is either through a granular fertilizer. Now, keep in mind, if you apply granular fertilizer, I heavily encourage you to incorporate it in the root system and place it down by the roots. I've done videos on how to apply fertilizer to your garden, particularly in the form of granular because where it lands physically, does make a difference, definitely something to think about. Now, the other scenario where you can choose to increase the synthetic is when you're starting to see signs of compost that has not been composted fully that you've added to your garden. And it can show up in so many different shapes and sizes, but probably the most popular and the one that I see the most is actually curling of the leaves and kind of like a deformed looking leaf. That's a sign of a compost that was added that either has a persistent herbicide, such as Grazon, for example, or it's a compost that is still heating, still cycling, all that fun stuff. One of the Geek crew messaged me on Instagram with photos of her soil where she added a whole bunch of compost or she bought a triple mix blend and it was not working. Things were looking a little goofy and I said to her, you probably have active compost in there because that's what it looks like and turns out after she kind of followed the instructions I gave her, she's off to the races. Everything's good so far for the rest of the year, but the beginning was a little bit of pain and suffering because the compost was not composted. If you run into this issue, the use of a liquid nitrogen fertilizer can definitely help. So I would actually encourage you to use a synthetic form of this. If you use an organic form, it's just gonna take longer. But if you use a synthetic form, uh, urea is a, a very popular version of this. It will actually speed that process up and give you a leg up in the process. And you would only need to do this for around you know two three seasons at most before you begin to see the benefits of your organic future payments that you've made think of it as like the stock market you are putting the fertilizer you're putting the compost and manure now for hopeful future returns and so long as mother nature decides to finally pull us out of a drought you will see the returns but if mother nature decides to be like wall street and just say then you're screwed. Now, the next video I'm releasing is actually on whether or not microbes are killed with fertilizer, particularly synthetic fertilizer, which may be something you wanna check out. I will, if I forget to link it here, then let me know, but I will try to put it here. That'll be coming out on Sunday, but otherwise check out this video down here because that's what Google says you need to watch next based on what you've been searching. So, talk to you guys later. Bye.